in this video lecture we're going to talk about how to derive equations to describe how temperature changes in one direction and what we'll end up doing is deriving the heat diffusion equation in one dimension with no generation and with a constant thermal conductivity. But we're going to start with a practical example. So imagine that you have two rooms separated by a wall so you have room one on the left and room two on the right, and um, they're going to be at different temperatures. So let's, and actually the wall surface, we're going to make this as simple as we can. So we're going to start out by just assuming that the surface temperature at each end of the wall is constant. So here we have TS1, and we're going to say that that's equal to 40 degrees Celsius. And on the other side we have TS2, and it's at a much more normal temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. So what we want to do is we want to come up with an equation that describes how temperature changes as a function of x, where x is starting at surface 1 and going into the wall until it reaches surface 2. And this wall is going to be L units thick. And we're going to consider only the one-dimensional example, which means we're only concerned about temperature changes in the x direction, the y direction, and the z direction, which would be coming in and out of the screen, are assumed to be a uniform temperature. Right? dt dy is always 0, and dt dz is always 0 as well. But dt dx is going to change in temperature largely because you see this two different temperatures, one on each side of the wall. So the first thing to do is to, we're going to look more closely at the wall, and again, we want to know how temperature changes going through the wall. What does that profile look like as you're going from one end of the wall to the other, and at any given depth into the wall? So if we zoomed in on the wall, so here's surface one, Here's surface 2. So what we want to do is we want to break the wall up. Just um, We want to break the wall up into several discrete sections. So these are just imaginary boundaries. So the wall, remember the total wall was L, L units thick but we're going to break this up into smaller, what are called nodes, and each of those nodes is going to be delta x units thick. And we're going to label those, so this is, this would be node 1, this would be node 2, and we're going to go, we can break this up into as many nodes as we, we want, so let's call this node n, let's call this node n minus 1. So any arbitrary node in the middle could be just indexed with a variable called i. So here we have i, we have i plus 1, and here we have i minus 1. The wall is going to have a constant density, we'll call it rho, and a constant heat capacity, we'll call it C sub p. It's also going to have a constant thermal conductivity, which is k. So we want to look at any arbitrary node. So we're going to look at node i. And this, the math we're going to develop here is going to be an energy balance on node i, and we want to make it generic enough that this math could, could represent any of the nodes except possibly for those at a boundary. So these guys might be different, so node 1 and node n will be different than the other nodes because node 1 is exposed to a boundary condition which is this constant surface temperature. And the same for node 1, it's exposed to this boundary, or that constant surface temperature, TS1. So if we did an energy balance on node I, we want to characterize how is energy coming in and out of this node. So first you want to have an accumulation term. And you also want to have, characterize what's coming in 
what's going out, what's being generated, and what might be consumed. So the accumulation is a representation of how the energy inside that inside that boundary, so within this control volume marked by the red lines, how much energy is in there. So temperature gives you a pretty good indication of how much energy is in a control volume, but first you need to know some of the constant values. So the total amount of energy in this node would be could be expressed by rho Cp times its volume. So its volume is going to be its length times its height times its depth. So it is delta x deep or delta x thick. And it, the whole node, it's going to be as tall as the entire wall and as wide as the entire wall. So we'll just, for the sake of, of doing this, we'll just say that it's delta y tall and delta z long, or delta z wide, I guess. So that gives us the density times heat capacity times its volume, and the temperature relative to some reference temperature would tell us how much energy is in there. But we actually, we really want to know how this is changing with time. So we're going to put in a time derivative in here. <clears throat> so we also want to characterize how much, how energy is getting in and getting out of that node. So in this example, TS1 was at 40 degrees, whereas TS2 is at 20 degrees. So we expect for um, energy to be flowing in the x direction. Energy will flow this way because it's hotter on this side. So this, there's a higher energy state here. Energy is going to flow through the wall this way, as long as those two temperatures are held like that. So it's easy to make the assumption, and actually we have knowledge that energy is going to be flowing in the x direction. So that means when we're looking at node i, we can make the assumption that at any given time, that node i minus 1 is going to be hotter. So energy will flow from node i minus 1 into node i. So let's just call that a flux for right now. So we're going to call that q in the x direction, and that's a heat flux. And if we evaluated this at distance x, I'm going to just put this line here, which means evaluated at some arbitrary distance x. So this is the just, just the flux coming in. So flux would be expressed in watts per meter squared. So to get the total energy flowing into this node, we want to get the cross-sectional area. So we would put in a delta y for the, for the height of the wall and a delta z for the total width of the wall, whereas delta x is the depth of the wall, but it's not energy is flowing in the x direction. So that component of the it does not show up in the cross-sectional area. All right, so that's how energy is flowing in, just by conduction. And um, energy is going to be flowing out from node i to node i plus 1. So we can put a similar term in here, the flux in the x direction. But now we're going to evaluate it at x plus delta x. So this x plus delta x gives us the distance that's the right boundary of node i. And again, it has the same cross-sectional area, which is delta y times delta z. So we haven't been given any information about how energy might be generated or consumed. So we're going to assume, and actually this problem has, there's no energy generated and there's no energy consumed. So this is basically our energy balance. So to get, to narrow down this energy balance, we, we're going to do accumulation is equal to in minus out. So we just want to take these terms and, and put them in that form. But first, we're going to cancel out. You see that delta y and delta z show up in both sides of the equation. So we'll just get rid of those to make the math a little bit cleaner. So on the left-hand side, we're going to have rho 
cp times delta x times dt dt change in temperature with time is equal to the flux in the x direction evaluated at x minus the flux in the x direction evaluated at x plus delta x. So the next step here would be to substitute in Fourier's law. So we just put these fluxes in, gener in generic terms, but knowing Fourier's law, we can quantify what those are. So we know that the flux is proportional to minus k times dt dx, or the negative of the thermal conductivity times the derivative of temperature in the x direction. So this is also equal to minus k dt dx evaluated at x. So this is the in term. We still have the negative here, but it gets a little tricky. So this is actually still minus k times dt dx evaluated at x plus delta x. So that's our, um, our change in area per unit of cross-sectional area. That accumulation is equal to, um, to the Fourier's law versions of the heat flux. So one thing that we can do to discretize this problem, so we, you notice that we've, we've broken up our problem into these discrete nodes. So we can approximate these derivatives with respect to x um, in a way that looks like this. So, so this term, rho cp times delta x times change in temperature with time is going to be approximately, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in um, discretized approximations of these derivatives. So here we have minus k times the temperature of the ith node minus the temperature of the i minus 1 node divided by delta x. So you can see this change in temperature from here to here is, a, is delta t. And that would be happening over, if you imagine the center of each of these nodes, that's going to be a thickness of delta x. And then we want to add in the second term where it's evaluated at x plus delta x. So now we've got plus, where I've taken these two negative signs and turned them into a positive, plus the thermal conductivity times t i plus 1 minus t i. And that is again divided by delta x. So if we were to um, disperse that thermal conductivity through and divide by divide both sides by delta x again, we would end up with an equation that looks like this. So we have the change in temperature with time is equal to k over rho cp multiplied by ti plus 1 minus 2 times ti plus ti minus 1. And that whole quantity is now divided by delta x squared because we had that in this approximation, but we also had delta x representing the thickness of our control volume over there. So in the limit, as delta x goes to 0, this actually becomes the one-dimensional form of the heat equation, where we get um, now a partial derivative because we have temperature changing with both x and with 
um, time is equal to k over rho cp times the second partial derivative of temperature with respect to x squared because this quantity is the definition as the limit goes to as the limit as delta x goes to zero this is the definition of the second derivative so this is also equal to alpha or the thermal diffusivity times that same partial derivative where alpha is just defined as the thermal conductivity divided by the density times CP. So it just makes the math a little bit cleaner. So actually, um, this, is, this is the way you get the analytical form of the heat equation. So this is the heat equation in one dimension. So you're neglecting what's happening in the, in the Y and the Z directions. And we can do that because we've assumed that temperature is basically constant in those directions, which is a, a good assumption for this problem. It's also only true for constant thermal conductivity and also when there's no generation and no consumption terms within the, our system, which is just the wall. So what we're going to use in our next video, we're actually going to solve this numerically. So we're actually going to back up a step back to when we just had uh, this form of the equation. And it makes it really nice to solve this numerically.